All right, guys, it's Grumpy. Grumpy's back. As promised, uh, this is a video to show the uh, recent uh, OpenSense HA uh, cluster that I just implemented here for somebody. <clears throat> yeah. This is actually as tidy as the uh, wires are going to get for now. Um, uh, because... I don't deploy something until I've tested it fully for a little while. It's going to sit in this sort of physical configuration until I'm happy that it's performing well and there's no further issues. So I'm hopefully going to tie this up and put this sort of on a shelf in the rack. But anyways, you can see here, guys, that there's two uh, Quotom devices. The top one is an i7. The bottom one is an i5. Uh, they both have 8 gigs of memory. And uh, as you can see, there's a HA interface uh, that connects the two. They're also both going to LAN. You can see the blue cables here are going to my LAN uh, switches that are up top. Then there's an HA cable there that's going uh, between the devices. Then I also have the WAN interfaces from both ports going to this bottom Dell PowerConnect 2808 switch. And then I also have a small little cheap Netgear switch. Now this is for a partner network uh, for this particular client. And that is also being used on the last interface uh, of the Cotom devices. So that's the physical setup. Uh, let me draw it out for you guys and go into more in depth on how it was set up in the OpenSense software. I'll try to explain that. So again, if we have the, uh, you can see the way we have those set up here. And if we see that the, this is my LAN port, Right, these are going up to the switches. Now I need to IP these uh, on the LAN. So let's say my LAN uh, network is like 10, 0, 0, uh, 0, and let's just say it's 24. I don't recommend using that, but let's just say it is. And I need to assign IGB 0, which is my first interface here on both these boxes, an IP address, a physical IP. I'm going to go ahead and assign this 10, 0, 0, two and this is my master and this is my slave right so then i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to sign this guy on igb zero ten zero zero three now i didn't assign it ten zero zero one because i need to reserve that for the virtual ip so the virtual ip address of both of these is gonna be 10, zero, zero, 1. And that's what's gonna get presented as my default gateway to my clients. So even if we lose, we completely lose the master, it has a physical IP address of 10, zero, zero, 0.2, but it's actually bound to the virtual IP here. So when we lose this and HA kicks in, CARP kicks in, it's just going to flip that virtual IP over to the 10.0.10003 unit. And now it will have 10.0.0.1 and nothing happens. And it's transparent to the end user. So we need to do this virtual IP assignment for every interface that we need HA to work on. In the case of the uh, WAN, I'm just going to draw these two here. This is my master. This is my slave. Okay, we have first port, first port. Now we have second port, so I'm just going to go like that. So you're going to get a general idea of what I'm doing here. So if this is my WAN port, right, and this is IGB1, uh, I need to also assign, and, this, and basically these are going to my WAN switch, right? So it's going to go like this, like this. I need to assign an IP address to each physical device on each physical interface. So let's just say, uh, for whatever reason, my uh, my ISP, I have a subnet or whatever of a few addresses, let's say six addresses. But let's just say I'm gonna assign my WAN 1.1.1.2, right? And I'm gonna assign 1.1.1.3 to here. And again, my virtual IP, is gonna be 1.1.1.1. And I know that's Cloudflare, I'm just using it, using this as an example. So my virtual IP is gonna be one, uh, four ones, then I have 1112, 113, because these actually need to, to have legitimate IP addresses 
on the WAN side. So you're not going to be able to uh, do AHA um, unless you have more than one IP address on the WAN side. Um, so that might be a challenge uh, for you guys. Um, in order to do it properly, there might be a way of doing it where you 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 know you you don't need to do this. Uh, I I I I've never done it in a way where I don't have multiple IP addresses that I can use for this. But anyways, and yeah, so these are going to get clustered as 1.1.1. And again, if we lose the master or we lose that interface, it's just going to flip over and it's going to assign it the virtual IP address of 1.1.1. Uh, okay, our HA side is very simple. Uh, we just need to choose a subnet that is outside of any network that we have on any interfaces. So if this is going to be master and this is going to be HA, slave and then HA, uh, you know, you could use something, you can use anything you want. I'm not a big fan of using huge ranges of IPs. Like I like keeping the subnet masks uh, pretty tight. But in this example, let's say I'll just use 192.168.22.1. Uh, and on this one, I'm going to use 192.168.22.2. Now these do not need a virtual IP because this is a direct link to a direct link. And all this is gonna get used for is for the uh, syncing portion. And that's gonna be used for syncing the configurations, also syncing the states if you choose to enable that. I have a partner network here that's gonna to go to a switch. And that will also need a virtual IP. So if my partner network is like, uh, let's say 172.16.22.2 and then 172.16.22.3 and the virtual IP is gonna be 172.16.22.1. Again, they have independent IP addresses on the interfaces and then my virtual IP will be this. So if we lose this, HA will kick in and it will assign the virtual, inter the virtual IP to this guy here. Now. All right, that wraps up the physical connectivity portion of the video. Uh, the next video will include some of the uh, settings in OpenSense, and I'll go through some of those. I hope you guys enjoyed this part one video. Uh, yeah, see you in the next one.